Howdy and welcome into today's show. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. I hope that uh, as you are listening to this, it's because of a few reasons. One, you're thankful for Forte Catholic. That would be great. Uh, here's another couple of scenarios. You're a dad listening in your headphones in the drive to wherever you're going for Thanksgiving because you don't want to listen to your kids. P.S. That's me. Uh, or you're a mom trying to escape her kids. You're on a walk or you're hiding in the bathroom or something. Enjoy the show. Uh, or you're like an aunt or an uncle and you're watching or listening with your little nephew or niece. This is a lot of caveats. But if you are in that situation, I apologize up front because I'm going to wake up your nephew or niece. I love today's show. Allison and I had a blast recording it right here in the studio. Uh, the final segment might be my favorite segment I've ever done. I'm so glad that y'all are here. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. What's up? And welcome to Fort Day Catholic. I'm Taylor <laughs> Stroll. That is Allison Sullivan. You just made me the bad guy. I think you would get in trouble for that. Now you're going to get me in trouble. No, 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 no. I, I, I didn't stop because I got in trouble. No, no. I, what was I thinking? I stopped. You would not stop if you got in trouble. No, 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 no. The story was I got in trouble and then I kept doing it for like six, yes, more, right, right, right. six more months longer than I wanted That's to That's how it goes <laughs> around here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Taylor Schroll. That's Allison Sullivan. This is Forte Catholic. I know I said some of that, but not all of it. So I had to repeat it all again. I'm still... <laughs> Just enjoying, I'm watching over and over again, you rearing back and yelling what's up. And it was like way higher pitched than it was. I it was, it was. Me too, actually. I surprised my own self. I need a little practice. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. You try again? It's a lot to live up to. No, we've, okay. we've assaulted okay, the people's good. ears enough. We're good. <laughs> uh, welcome in. We Here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> you were surprised where you found me when you got here. I was. You were like sunbathing in your driveway. It was bizarre. <laughs> I was like, is all okay? I really was concerned that something had gone terribly wrong. You looked like a sad little boy. Like your knees were up. You kind of had your elbows on your knees. You were drooped down. I was I was ready to rush in and like problem solve. And you were you got out of your car so fast, you're like, hey! And I'm like, hello. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. I I yeah. I I had a million scenarios. Well, we're just chilling. It, it, here we are in late November. It's 85 degrees outside. Uh, yeah. I so like I'm I'm busy today. So I recorded another podcast called Catholic Gamer Dads with one of my friends. That Ooh. was fun. Yeah. Uh, that apparently, does sound fun. I'm one of the co-hosts of that show now. <laughs> he texted me on Wednesday. and Said, "Hey, you want to do a show promotion?" With me? And uh, I said, "Sure." And that's how that podcast. Started. Nice. I love it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that'll be uh, somewhere. I'm not sure yet. We did it on Twitch. It's going to go on YouTube. I'll just follow me on social media. At Taylor and Sorrell be surprised. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I recorded that and then recording this with you. Yes. And then right after this, I'm going to kick you out of that chair. Okay. And my other friend, Sarah Lesman, is going to come take that really? chair. Really? And we're going to do a presentation. I for... will get it nice and warm for her. <laughs> <laughs> the Diocese of Sioux City. We're doing a diocesan presentation from the water closet. Right By the way, speaking of your water closet, so I always monitor the alcohol that you have up here. Mm -hmm. You do not drink very much, Taylor. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've switched to beer recently. Okay, that's which it. is the most 2020 thing ever because I'm not a beer drinker. Uh huh. Uh, so what you're really noticing, uh -huh. like it's crazy how two of us can look at one thing and notice two very different things. Oh yeah. What we're noticing now in reality is that I'm running low. And the lower I run on alcohol, the less I drink, so I don't have to go purchase more. Maybe it's because what I really have my eye on is the margarita mix, and that stays the same. So you're not drinking well, margaritas, which is why we're good drinking partners, because I will. Well, here's the thing. Is that a new bottle? No. That's the <laughs> light margarita mix. Yes, of course. That's what wife, I want. who hasn't been drinking recently. Okay. And you, who... Yeah. Like, Every time you come over until today, you've been in such a huge rush that we haven't been able to drink. Oh, but uh, maybe we'll make one. And the, time out. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. We're going to finish the segment. But uh, you know what we'll do? We'll come back for our second segment and have some margaritas. Perfect. We'll be right back. I'm just, I kidding. Love I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're not leaving yet. OK, fine. Um, I can wait. But uh, yeah, so like three recordings in a row. I'm spending yeah, a that's a lot in here. That's a lot of uh, talking. So, so it's a was, lot of words. I was just going to go sit outside and get some vitamin D from the sun. And like I had it way too cold in here for a little while, so I had to. Go it was get, a little get, chilly. Get a little. I noticed a little warmth. Um, but you, you've also had a pretty busy. Uh, yeah, man, hours. it's so weird because like during COVID, you're doing so little, and then I felt like this week was bam, 
back at it. I um, got to do Magnify at St. Mary's, which is such an honor. Like literally the Cardinal is next time. (laughs) You were the warm up act, but it was a month apart. (laughs) Totally. So I'm getting heckled in the front row by my friends who are like, that's hilarious. Um, So, but the way that they have Magnify set up is it was, it was broken up into several different talks. So Magnify is this thing here locally at Texas A&M. It's 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 your typical like XLT. So uh, praise and worship, adoration. Usually there's a good speaker. (laughs) (laughs) I know that that was not intended for me, my direction. Um, So, but yeah, so they have Magnify broken up for social distancing. And then there was a bonus talk and then there was spiritual. I I don't, they're not calling it spiritual direction, but people were able to make appointments um, with me this morning. So I've just been talking to a lot of people. I've also been using a lot of words. Yeah. Oh dear. (laughs) Well, I, I tell you what I do is I get invested. I'm like, well, now I need your phone number because I need to know how this story ends. So, um, yeah, so it's just been a lot of extroverting. I'm, um, using words now and they I feel like they're costing me things like each one I'm exhausted well good this is how I like you. I know what, Broken what? Down, like beaten up. Yeah. <laughs> disgruntled <laughs> fuzzy minded my uh, synapses aren't connecting willing to yell to start the show like yes the, the very well, well, Loopy. well put together and Allison now you're gonna put a margarita in my hand I don't know we're gonna have some fun yeah we're gonna have some fun so you did this like spiritual quasi spiritual direction thing but the primary yeah. thing that you were doing was mm-hmm. giving this talk and you, yes you are um notorious you used to be notorious for following your notes to the t oh uh-huh. uh but now like we look at you today you have no notes today you're just you're just going for it uh so i i feel like if you would have given two talks last year Right. I could have listened to them and not seen any difference whatsoever. <laughs> right. Good point. You know what? And it's funny you say that because they were wildly different um, because the the musicians started strumming at very different points in the talks. And I'm like, whoa, OK, land in the plane, land in the plane, which it was they weren't even long talks. It's not like I had, you know, gone off on many tangents or anything. Um, but, yeah, you're right. They were they were a little different. So. <laughs> You had this 20 minute time slot. Yes. And you were telling me the story right before we went live. So uh, you got through 60% in yeah. one of the talks and the, yeah. and the guitarist is wrong. And what, for those, I've been on both ends. I've been the speaker where the, yep. like, the guitarist is strumming you out and I've yep. been the guitarist where I'm like, sometimes it's okay. Like you've gone five, 10 minutes over time. Like it's time. To yeah. Do, other times it's like, you just spoke heresy. We're just going to play. You oh, out. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so which do you think it was? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that they stick to a really strict schedule, but honestly, and and maybe this is, um, optimistic on my part. Maybe I'm giving myself a little too much credit because I had not gone over. I'm just, I'm pretty, I'm punctual, you know, I I had not gone over. And what I was talking about was discipleship. I mean, there wasn't anything too controversial or anything. So I really think that the woman was accompanying me. Like, I really think that she was setting the mood. Right. And she did great. And it was awesome. And both talks were lovely. I'm, I, I feel I felt let's put it this way. I went to bed really happy last night and woke up really happy because sometimes you know how that can happen. It's like you give a talk and then you go to bed and you're like this anxiety, this anxiety of, oh, gosh, did I say this? Oh, I forgot that. Oh, how did they take this? And then the next morning that can happen, too. And this I like I feel great. It was awesome. Well, good. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. I, I've had uh, multiple. I talked of, uh, maybe a month ago about how I did a talk at a youth night and it was really bad. Oh gosh! And I, it, it, I didn't lay in bed. I just played video games to like four. Right. I knew, like, I'm Avoidance. Not going to sleep tonight, totally. You know? Yeah. Oh gosh, um, it's the worst. But for for those of y'all who haven't been like around ministry events like this, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you go to mass, you do your thing. Like they're not playing out the priest at his hobbly. Like, right. You know, so like, right. I need my life set to music. Like <laughs> right. that would be great. But it is funny. So like you've probably watched the Oscars or the Grammys. It's like, <laughs> hello, thank you for this award. I'd like to thank God. And, but what's so funny is like, you know, we get this like in, in Christian circles, especially ministry circles. It's like, like we have, like just like we're talking about with the alcohol, like two different people can look at one situation yeah. and see or hear two right. very different things. Right. Because it's like it could be like if they're if the musician is good at their at their craft, yeah, they are perfectly yeah, like they're working with you. Yeah. At the same time, it's a as little saying, bit of a dance, isn't it? Shut up, you're done. Yeah. So just yeah. like the Oscars, so it's this really funny thing that like if you're good at ministry, you're helping along people. Yeah. 
but also like te- you know letting the speaker know like hey it's time to wrap up you're yeah. done and uh what it's, it's funny like there was one time where i was the i was the musician but i was playing with my band and so like i just went up by myself and just started strumming and playing and picking on guitar and the longer they went i just brought up another band member you know so like bring the piano in that oh that's is nice. great and then the next time like once the drummer gets there like you're you're done <laughs> You're not going to win that battle, you know? It's like, you're like, and then Jesus, you know, he calls us into. It's like, you're done. Oh my God. You're done. Get yeah. Off. Yeah. Take a hint. Take a hint. Um, no, I, I do. I think that I asked Seth, I was like, oh my gosh, was it the Oscars moment? Was it that? And he was like, not at all. So. Well, I'm glad you asked someone unbiased. I know. Right. Well, <laughs> shush. So you talked about discipleship, which yeah. is which is a topic that no one's ever talked about. Before. I know. So, so how like how, it was assigned. How did you make it Allison Sullified? Well, I think okay. So f- for me, I feel like discipleship has to be authentic because so often we will have an encounter. I know I just got real um, gestury. <laughs> Um, (laughs) discipleship has to be authentic. I say, see, I feel strongly about this. It has to be authentic because otherwise we just boil it down to checkpoints and to do lists. And so we will have an encounter, but it cannot stop there because the truth of the matter is that Jesus told us this horrible thing in Luke, Luke, where he sets this parable up where he tells people who are banging on the door. I don't know you. And so who Jesus was talking to at the time was the church crowd. When he said this, he was like, you know, these were law abiding Hebrew reading, you know, Jews. These were this was the church crowd that he was telling this to. But what he was doing when he said that is he was urging them into more than just recognition. So what does discipleship mean? What does it mean to be, you know, an apprentice of someone? And I think that when we look at discipleship, we are so quick to make it a checklist or a to-do list um, or a formula when the truth is there's nothing formulaic about the Bible. It's a story of imperfect people having a relationship with a perfect God. There's nothing formulaic about the way that Jesus encountered people. So if discipleship is going to be authentic for me, it has to start with doing the things that stir my affection for God, because then that affection for God leads to astonishment in what he's done for us. And all that he's given. And then that astonishment is what leads to the study, that apprenticeship. And then that apprenticeship leads to us acting that out in our own lives because we have studied him so intently that we talk the way he talks. We think the way he thinks. We we walk the way he walks. We feel the way he feels. The things that he gets mad at, we get mad at. The things that break his heart, break our heart. And so I knew you were going to say that. Like literally in my head, I go break my heart for what breaks for yours, yes. and then three seconds later. Na, 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 na. Okay, so um, <laughs> so anyways, margarita. <laughs> and then and then that acting out because we've studied so intently, the acting out leads to other people being intrigued, and so when we are so astonished by our God that it is coming out in the way that we live our lives, that's when people look in and go, Hey, what's going on over there? (laughs) You know? And so, um, the truth is that classes don't make disciples, programs don't make disciples, disciples make disciples. So you were talking about like authenticity and you've been along this discipleship path for quite some time. So I have two questions, one serious and then the other one, uh, might be across the face. I wouldn't expect Uh, anything. So, like when it comes to like authentic discipleship where you're like the things that really stir your heart. So like, Mm -hmm. what is that for you Mm -hmm. in the last few years of like, this is where I've learned to be authentic Allison, the disciple. Okay. Well, so what stirs my affection? I think that's what you're asking is it's being outside. It's having a soulful conversation. That's why I met you out there. (sighs) I know. Look (laughs) at that. That always happens to us in your show. It's like everything just so neatly wraps up. Um, but, it's because you always bring up the alcohol, and I always <laughs> have something to say about alcohol. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I just like cackled, shrieked into your listeners' ears. Um, I feel like I'm being so loud right now. Whew. Um, right so, after you said you're done extroverting, you're gonna I'm, be really calm I, and quiet. I know. I'm I like, tried no, to no, warn you, and it's like <laughs> like you wound me up and let me go. Um, but yeah, getting outside, a good phone call, um, you know, with a friend, music. You always lead me deeper into prayer with your music. Um, I love playing you out mostly. <laughs> look at us again. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, What's yeah. crazy about playing you out? You talked earlier about being punctual. 
mm-hmm. and you were like, you're, you're saying like, oh, I have a 20 minute slide. Of 20. Like usually in the ministry that we've done together, you're giving a 25 minute talk. Yeah. And I have never seen someone more consistently oh, give thanks. a 24 minute and 58 second right. thing to where it's like, literally, I'm not playing you out. I literally go by the time of the schedule and I've never done that before in my entire <laughs> ministry career. <laughs> That's <It's> awesome. unbelievable. <laughs> Well, thank you. I think I'd rather be complimented in other ways, but I will definitely take that one from you, Taylor <laughs> Schroll. Um, yeah. So just things in nature, uh, music, friends. Um, what else? I don't know. Okay. So yeah. now here's creating this. something. I love creating something written that I feel proud of or that I feel like kind of wrote itself. That's and, always and, fun. And then you come to me and I'm like, put those away, please. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so here's the next question. What is something that you saw an authentic disciple doing that you tried to do and it was not authentic. It didn't work. Oh my gosh. Do you know how many friends I have that have this like early morning workout routine because, Oh, it just leads me so deep into prayer. Dude, I'm praying to live. I'm praying to breathe. I hate it. I tried it and it's terrible. I just end up cussing the whole time. I say, dear God, a lot in workouts. And it's not <laughs> considered a prayer by most people. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah. What else? I don't know. Um, people have I wanna hear really, what, like, I want I want to hear like, so you, you like you you've you've been around church for your whole sure. life. Like mm-hmm. we, we've talked a little bit about but I want to know like college Allison. Like mm-hmm. what is something that college so, Allison looked at and was you like, know how, do that? You know how when we were little we had the the trapper keepers? Okay, we were little at different times. No, Shut we, up. I, I know. know Shush. I just I just remembered who I was talking to. We had these trapper keepers. Well, the, so the Christian sorority girl had a, a Christian trapper keeper, and it was like this really extensive journal. Now oh, I am I not it was like a dream catcher, and I was like, that wasn't. No, 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 Christian. no. Oh, tr- oh, I can see how you might think that. No, it was like a binder. And so I am not rolling my eyes at this because it is beautiful and it really, really works for people. And and it does not work for me is the point. Okay. But it's like, it's a journal. There's writing prompts. There's your schedule. It's just a way to stay organized. There's prayer space. You can doodle, you can color all the, all the things. And I, it doesn't work. (laughs) What we're going to do next segment is I'm going to get (laughs) Allison a margarita and a pad, and I'm going to require you to doodle (laughs) and color throughout it. Okay. I'm going (laughs) to, Yes, I'm going to characterize you, or I'm going to make a caricature of you. That's terrifying. <laughs> I know. I know. Get ready. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad your talk went well. I'm yeah. glad you got played out at different times. Because yeah. That means one musician liked your talk better than the other. Now, are you feeling tired from all the things that you've been doing? So here's the thing. I've been I've been exhausted most of the week. To the point that like usually like my recording time, like even if I wake up, like I usually wake up around nine ish, which is late for a human person. And I realize that, but I can't do like this. Like I can't have energy until like at least right. 10, 1030. I get that. Yeah. I've had to push it back till 1030 yeah. because I've been so exhausted. And like, I just have bad allergies and it's cold and it's cold yeah. season. And there's this, you know, COVID thing still around yeah. there. And like, I, I've just woken up where like, like if people watch last week's show on YouTube, I had to record the commercials like the morning that it was going out mm. and I look like I'm dead. <laughs> I have this. I didn't see the YouTube. Pristine, I did listen, but I didn't see the pristine YouTube. 4k camera showing the like crust still oh, in my geez, eyes gross. and stuff. Sick. So I've been, it's weird. It's weird. Like I've been really tired until about 10, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then I'm just wired. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I think that's what's happening now. I think I'm slap happy from sleep deprivation. Well, good. I'm glad you're here. We're going to take a break. I'm going to get this woman a margarita. <laughs> and we're going to come back and uh, talk about some more things. Beware. Hopefully that are good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. go anywhere. We'll be right back. If you want to stay connected with Forte Catholic more than just the once a week on a podcast, I would love to get to know you guys. We have a great community. Uh, on social media. I love interacting with everybody there. Uh, We have a Forte Catholic Facebook page if you want to like that. Uh, We've got a LinkedIn page now. That's new. Apparently that's a thing people are doing. Uh, And uh, as always, Instagram at Taylor Schroll, Twitter at Taylor Schroll, and at Forte Catholic. Would love to get to connect with you guys there. Enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Schroll. That is Allison Sullivan. And as promised, we have our margaritas. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> we did it. Cheers, friend. Uh, this is nice. Uh, day drinking. I know. This is so great. <laughs> After a busy week, yeah. I guess you still have something to do. but I do. It's only a presentation to the diocesan leaders of an entire diocese. But, have you know, mercy. Whatever. <laughs> In an hour. Maybe I didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> it's only half a margarita. We're splitting one, so it's uh-huh. fine. Yeah. 
Um, good thing I'm overweight. <laughs> what? With the, your light margarita mix? It's light. It's, uh, it, it wasn't the light one. I used the regular one. No. Yep. Really? Yeah. You can't do me like that. That's not you. That I no. That is false advertising. It's Thanksgiving week. You'll be all right. This yeah, you're the right. Worst thing you're, you'll you're, do for your that is that is certain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I saw this thing the other day, and I it was on Instagram, and I reshared it, and I believed in it, but I had to think about it. Okay. And a lot of people I did not see this by the agreed way agreed and disagreed with it. Okay. So it said that. Um, the version of you from five years ago would be proud. Mm. And and I thought it was interesting because mm. I've, I've often heard like, oh, uh, you know, would would if you told six year old Allison how you turned out, like, would you be proud? It's like, yeah, yeah. OK. So my first impression is that five years is like a way bigger percentage of your life than it is mine. Like, I don't do math in public, but I mean, like five years ago is not long if, enough for me if like, i can just do some quick math it is exactly one sixth of my life and if i'm doing rough math it's about one one fiftieth of your life <laughs> <laughs> just quick math i'm not sure if it's accurate completely. i know enough math uh, excuse me i know enough math to know that that was rude do you though <laughs> <laughs> Um, five years ago, though, I mean, I feel like I was doing a lot of the same things five years ago. So what, not that much has changed. <laughs> I mean, what? You, I've I've gained a child. I was about to say you like our whole last. For those of you who listen <laughs> regularly, we we finally talked about Allison's child that she adopted. Yes, did that's special needs. Yes, and that's uh, the love of your life. Yes, uh, and. And you're just like, yeah, nothing's changed. Well, I mean, but we were already so thick in the middle of parenthood. I mean, it's not like we were dabbling in parenthood, you know, before then. So you don't think you've changed in five years? I don't. I've grown like Manny has definitely grown us. I think that I'm a better speaker than I was then. I think I'm I've worked on like things like vanity, you know, I'm far less vain when it comes to not just everyday life, but professional life too. You know, we were just kind of commenting that I don't need all my notes, you know, to make sure that, um, everything goes just as planned. Maybe there's kind of a lack of control too. So I think I've had, I've had some victories that feel important, but you know, why are you laughing at me? I'm smiling so much. Why? I, lo- I just love when you give me ammunition. Oh, no. What did I say? Because you're, you're saying like, oh, yeah, I'm just a better speaker. It's in the last five years, I'm more relaxed. and I'm not tied to my notes. I'm less vain. Uh, you met me five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I've helped you become a better speaker. I've made I've made you not use your notes because I knew you had it in you. I wasn't yeah. trying to be mean. I was like, look, I know you have it in you. And that also you're less you ha- vain because we're friends and I've not You've let you You've just worn be me down. You've totally worn me down. I know exactly who I am now. I am not that great. Um, no, that's funny. I, but so I, mm, is there anything I would be disappointed in five years ago? Hmm. That's kind of interesting. No, I, I, what about you? What's good? What's going on over there? So I, I was thinking about it and it was one of those things I, I was like five years ago, mm-hmm. I moved here. Uh, right. Like yeah. I literally changed my life. Yeah. Uh, around, like a little over five years ago. So five years ago, I was just settling in. Um, I was leading, leading worship for, for mass, probably played out the priest, you know, <laughs> 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 got a little log. um, but and then this this uh, this lady came up to me and asked me if I was Protestant because yeah. she liked the music and she yeah. hadn't liked music in the Catholic Church for a while. And I'm like, explain yourself, Allison Sullivan. <laughs> that's, that's the last time I saw you at Mass, but you know, whatever. It's five years ago. <laughs> <Rude. laughs> so, but uh, yeah, like it was it was so interesting because five years ago, Forty Catholic started. Five years ago, I started working for a place. Five years ago, I moved from my hometown, being a parish youth minister, and I was a, a guy with dreams. Yeah. And over the last five years, I have had so many of those dreams crushed and so wow. many of them fulfilled. Okay. So it's, it's Gosh, that's this like, is great. This is great um, content. Gosh, I can't well, come was, up with that word. You started that sentence. And still, yeah, I know. <laughs> Please go on. So it is, this has probably been, it's probably been the biggest five years of my life. Yeah. Like, I think there's an argument for the previous five years. Like I got married and had my first kid sure sure like there's I, I think that maybe that's first but this is close like professionally it's been the biggest five years of my yeah life. like i've like just like i i 
live in this world now, like this mm -hmm. ministry world, this podcasting world, this like literally I work for Forte Catholic now, which was literally starting as a website and a blog right. five years ago. Right. And now it's this thing. Yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Um, so what, like to answer the question, would five years ago me be proud of now? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the funniest response was uh, a lot of people were like, no, I hate myself. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. That's sad. Yeah. Uh, but the funniest one was from a seminarian because he was like five years ago, I was doing the tip, not the typical, but a typical, uh, seminarian thing where he was like you know i'm gonna have a great job make a ton of money and i'm gonna wow. get married and now i'm in the seminary so right. it was interesting because he said five years ago me five years ago him would be so upset that he's in the seminary now hmm. but him now but him now right is now it's right it's, it's, it's we talked about pride and healthy pride last week like he's proud of where he is now yeah. and it was like it was this crazy thing of like it's it's like which way are we looking? Are we looking back and seeing oh how am I better or worse than I was then? Mm -hmm. Or like what would that five five years ago person think about me now? And it's just it's it's like it's so similar but it's so different. Of like if you've grown as a person, you probably like yourself better now. And it's like right. we can joke and go back and forth. Like yeah, I, I like myself and don't like myself every seventeen seconds, and it goes back and forth. Right. But ultimately, I look back and it's been like it has been. A crazy five years, a crazy sixth of my yeah. sixth of my life. You know, I'm I'm kind of I'm having a moment because if you helped me put it um, in better context by actually thinking, you know, where was I five years ago? So when you said you were, you know, playing music at a church, like where was I five years ago? And five years ago, I was about to release a book. And so if I probably had much higher hopes for what was going to happen with that book than what actually happened. So it's interesting to go back and look at what's happening now from that person's, you know, perspective, because that person five years ago would maybe be a little disappointed in me that I didn't, you know, sell more copies. I am really pleased because I think that a lot of my peace with what happened didn't happen comes from all the lessons that I've learned in the process, all the things that you've taught me about not being vain, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so gosh, that's, that's a, it's a really, really interesting question. It reminds me also of parenthood. You know, people are always like, Oh, what's your favorite age? And I've always answered. And I think that this is most people's answer. It's just, it's whatever we're doing right now. That's, that's my favorite. Um, I do think that I look back and am pretty nostalgic for a two-year-old. There's something about the little size of their body and they have this kind of big belly and, and big head and they just butcher the English language, which so is so fun. At 31. <laughs> <laughs> but they have all these intense emotions and no language for it. And it's all so just hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Taylor, our favorite toddler. Now that needs to be in print somewhere oh we i didn't get your doodle pad <laughs> yes right right um but anyways you know i think that it would be a really sad statement to say that i'm not happy with my life how it's unfolding right now i mean certain there are moments to to grieve but um but for the most part i i love how how this story is being written out yeah and i think it's interesting because like it, it looking back at the five years before i had my answer and it's very definitive yes but it wasn't definitive at first. Right. Like I had to think about it because it's like, what glasses am I looking at it through? Right. You know, am I looking at through the positive glass? If I, if I just went through and listed all the positive things, I'd feel great about it. Yeah. If I went through and listed all the negative things, right. I'd feel terrible about it. Right. Yeah. But taking it as a whole, it is overwhelmingly positive. But for like, for a moment when I was just looking at the negative things, I was like, man, it was a tough five years, you know? Yeah. But just look at the positive things and ignoring the, the, the negative wasn't really healthy either. So I had to look at all of it. Yeah. And I was just, I, I was just listening to a podcast about uh, Russell Wilson. He's a football player. Yeah. He's uh, r really, really good. He's won a Super Bowl. He's been in another one. Um, but like his whole thing, like he has a person that works with him, like th where their job is to get to a neutral place where everything He's never too high about the highs and never too low about the lows. Right. And I found it intriguing because I am very high about the highs. Yeah. And I'm not very low about the lows. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still pretty optimistic and, mm -hmm. and positive. Like I will complain with my words. Yes. But I'm going to push through it. Like perseverance yes. is my thing. Like I'm an idiot. I, like if the, I, I'm going to run through that wall, it might take me a thousand tries and I'll get a bunch of yeah. bumps and bruises. Yeah. Through, but I'm going to get through that wall. 
Um, but like, it, it was an interesting thing because I'm like, is it healthy to like get really high about the highs and get really low about the lows and like feel all your emotions, right? Yeah. Like I've never really been like that um, on the low side, but on the yeah. high side, I'm like, yeah, I'm the best. This is right. awesome. Um, so I, it, it, he's just trying to ride neutral. So if, if he throws a touchdown, he's not going to celebrate like crazy. If he throws an interception, he's not going to get down. It's like really crazy. good. And he's phenomenal. Right. But there are other players who are great and they feel all of them like uh, Aaron Rodgers, another great quarterback. They're both going to be hall of famers. You can look at him and you see his body language, you know, when he's upset Yeah. and you know, when he's feeling him. Yeah. Like he, he, yeah. and, and uh, it's just, it's just it's this, a different approach. Yeah. So like, like, where are you at on that? Story? Okay, so I was just actually saying this to a friend the other day who had called and was just hurting about some, it was some some social media stuff. She has a platform and um, some feedback had come in. That I just, have famous friends. No, <laughs> you know her. Um, so, but anyway, she was, my advice as I was listening was lopping off those extremes, you know, so you're going to have people write in and tell you how amazing you are and how you've totally changed their life. Lop it off. And then you're going to have people write in and tell you that you're a total heretic and don't deserve to take up any space in the world. Lop it off. And the truth is somewhere in the middle. You're never as great as you think you are. You're never as bad as you think you are. And as I was literally, this was so fun, but funny, but literally after I had that conversation, um, maybe two or three days later, some, it was just, just weird by chance, but some, um, emails came into me, emails, DMS, all different via different ways. But, um, one of them was so sweet. Hey, you left a book in our rental. Um, I just finally had time to read it. It was so was amazing. Did you leave your book? I did. Book? She asked me to because she, it doesn't matter. It's a long story. Shush. I was not being weird. Okay. So, but she was like, I finally just read it and it was blah, blah, blah. It was so nice. Like nice, nice, nice. And then something else came in nice. And I don't remember why. See, cause I really do lop it off. And then something came in through Facebook messenger that was, I want to tie you to a chair and shoot you. She literally sent me a, a gravestone with my name on it. I mean, awesome. it, right. Was she offering to pay for it? <laughs> like, that's a $5,000 investment. And so this all came in on the exact same day. And I was like, I think the Lord wants me to take my own advice right. <laughs> to lop some stuff off and just cruise in neutral. I think I do pretty good in neutral. So here's what I do. Uh, this is how I stay neutral. I'm, N- neutral ish, but not neutral. Like I- I'll neutral with a little bit of streams on every side. Uh-huh. But what I'll do is when the haters come, I'll copy and paste the positive story and send it to the haters. And that's how I even it. Out. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Actually, I'm amazing. Okay. So. But what about the other way? Because I'd really like to send some oh, people no, who no, think no. I'm a saint, a picture of my grave. No, no, that you can't <laughs> have it can be completely neutral. Cause I'm not <laughs> Russell Wilson. <laughs> Oh, that's really interesting, though. It's a good thought. I like it. So the other thing along these same lines uh-huh. is uh, you're a huge fan of Pokemon, right? Uh, obvi. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, hold on. I know one. You know, I know one. Pikachu. You do know what a Pikachu is. And that will that will actually be really helpful for this. Oh, good. Oh, good. Because I, I saw this thing and it said that um, as, a, as a meme, it said 90s kids didn't really go up, grow up. They evolved. Ah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I I mean, I was born in 89 in October. Like I grew up in the nineties. Like I'm an eighties kid and I will claim that essentially Uh, whichever one is, is more like if somebody's like, Oh, what are you a nineties kid? I'm like, no, I was born in the eighties. Somebody's like, no, what are you super old? I'm like, nah, I grew up in the nineties. Yeah. Like I'll play it. Sure. 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 You can do both. Cause I'm, cause I'm, I'm I'm right on the edge there. Living life on the edge since (laughs) 1989. (laughs) So, uh, but it was this picture. And I love when she, people try to make points and their point is completely ruined by something else that they did. So here, here they are. The, the starters, like the Pokemon that you can pick from when you start. Okay. Are Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur. Wow. And then Pikachu is important for Pokemon. So there's a picture of the four of them. And then it's like, we didn't grow up. We evolved. So uh-huh. their final evolution gotcha, for gotcha. those three yes. are Charizard. Blastoise and Venusaur. Okay. And then Pikachu is, sit- is still sitting there. Oh, he didn't. P- Pikachu has an evolution called Raichu. <laughs> you don't know that because you don't watch Pokemon or care about Pokemon, yeah, right? Yeah, you lost me. But it was still Pikachu. So what I did was I shared the meme and I said, 
uh, yeah, we all evolve, but some of y'all are still Pikachu. Like you're still, <laughs> nice. yes. you're still the same person right. that you were before. You haven't evolved yet. Yeah. And I, I thought it was just, a, it was it's just a kind of a funny thing, but also just like, you know, like there are people in my life that are just like, I, I just wish you would grow up. Yeah. You know, like, uh, like it's adulting time now. Yeah. You know? Um, Although I think that some of the people that I most want to um, correct in that way are people that hang out in that negative extreme. Mm. You know, it's like I, I feel like the evolving is getting somewhere, you know, t- back to the middle because I, I lean towards optimism, too. I'm more likely to believe the good feedback that comes in than right. the bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're right. These other people are so wrong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely how I am. So. Uh, that that's the thing. It's like I I hope that you guys listening are can look at it and be like, you know what, I'm I'm proud of the person that I that I've become because like you're either way you're stuck with you now, right? Yeah, I think it's a really good question to take to one of like those trapper keeper journals and like you know write sure. about for a really long time. Where were you five years ago? What were your hopes? How have they materialized? How have they not? And how is that good or bad? How does that make you feel and why, you know, like, here's how I feel about it. Here's how I wish I felt about it. And then the difference in between. I think it's a really good little practice. You're a conundrum because this whole segment, you were like, oh, I don't like Trapper Keepers, which is a writing thing. Yeah. Five years ago, you were only a writer. And now I see you more as a talky, talky words person than a writer. <laughs> and yet you hated the Trapper Keeper. And it's just like, you're just going, you're not evolving. You're like going in circles. <laughs> I live to madden you, Taylor. Well, you're doing a great job. <laughs> you're well, welcome. I hope that you enjoyed your margarita. Uh, yeah, just like take this to thought. Take this to prayer this week. Um, have you evolved? Are you still stuck as a Pikachu? Uh, are you proud of yourself uh, from where you were five years ago? What's changed for the positive? What's changed for the, neg- the negative? And then, uh, you know, let's make five years ago, five years from now person proud of this person right now and weigh in on if taylor is in fact pikachu and submit your best caricature i am 100 percent charizard <laughs> okay the most powerful and the most moody <laughs> oh I like we'll it. be right back don't go anywhere not only is it thanksgiving week but it is black friday week hooray but what's great about black friday now is that you don't have to wait in line at 6 a.m to get the deals and do i have a deal for you you can get one of these forte catholic shirts you can get one of these hats you've got other uh, another shirt on there as well fortecatholic.com slash store and 2020 has been su- such a rough year for everybody that i'm giving you 20 percent off any order any order that you want you can get this all this swag for uh, fans of the show uh, for christmas you know because none of you have started your christmas shopping i know you so if you want to get you know somebody that loves the show and you want to support the show as well go to fortecatholic.com slash store use the code 2020 and you'll get 20 percent off peace three two and one <laughs> good lord <laughs> welcome back to forte catholic i'm taylor schroll that is our in-house model Allison <laughs> Sullivan, doing her modeling poses i need to apologize to your listeners i've been so loud today i've been like making strange noises into this microphone i'm really sorry you know i'm like good at post-production stuff right? really you can lop things off oh, and not sure. harm people's ears thank you well good. i can do the first one not the second yeah uh, because the second one is pretty i'm useful. annoying my own self if i feel like that makes it a little more tolerable when it's like i'm even annoying myself i'm in your head <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> well so uh, we've finished our margaritas we're having a grand old time yeah I-, I finished mine did you finish yours? yes well good i'm proud of you thanks um i saw this quote the other day i don't waste margaritas and I wanted to talk about it with a woman folk. Okay. And that's you. Okay. You are one of one of the women folk. I am. Uh, because I think I'm kind of a woman in this category. Oh. Okay. So there's this quote from... I'm intrigued. From uh, That was the point. Uh, hopefully I'm good at radio. It's only <laughs> number 215 of this. So I saw this quote. I think I heard this quote from a book that I've been reading. And... Again, everyone knows that when I say there's a book I'm reading, someone's reading it to me <laughs> on Audible. Oh, sure. I'm like a child. I, I mean, I, I was me. picturing one of your children reading to you at night, but okay. Chris can. Chris, <laughs> reads, Chris reads the Old Testament and he's like, and then Methuselah went to the well. I'm like, well, that's amazing. <laughs> that's great. Um, uh, my son doesn't sound anything like that, but I, I don't know why I did that at all, actually. I painted a picture. Thanks I've, got it, I've got it envisioned. So... 
<laughs> my, my, yeah, my son's Benjamin Button. He's 113 years old. <laughs> so uh, it was from Dr. John Townsend. Okay. He said, a well-trained intuition mm-hmm. is a good servant and a poor master. Mm. So when I like literally, if we did word association with the word intuition, yeah, I literally think woman. <laughs> like that's the first yeah. word that comes. Like, right. Oh, a woman's intuition. Mom always knows. A woman yeah. always knows. Right. Um, you know, like we think about like even when it's like having kids, it's like oh, I have an intuition that it's a boy, and it's ninety percent of the time it's a boy. Like right. So, uh, do, do you have that same word association as I do with like women and intuition, or no? I I don't know. Okay, yes, because I do. I'm getting the same like cultural feedback that you're getting. So yes, I'm not sure that it's accurate. I do not think that all women have really excellent intuition. Now, I will say that I think most people that do have really good intuition are women. Hold on. You know how there's that stat that says that 90% of geniuses are left-handed? That does not mean that if you're left-handed, you're a genius. It just means that 90% of geniuses are left-handed. And that stat might be wrong. I know are very dumb. (laughs) (laughs) I'm right-handed, just so you know, if that was intended as a slight. Um, So... Yeah, but I consider myself having good intuition, and I do happen to be a woman. Do you think you have good intuition? That's the problem that I have with this word association, okay. because I live my life off of intuition. Right. So I, I went and looked up a, a quick definition on Wikipedia, of course. The- I agree that you have good intuition if you care. Oh, let's if get into I- that. Screw Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, no. I want to know what Wikipedia says. Okay. Well, I want to know what you want to say. We'll get there. Intuition. The ability to understand something immediately without need for conscious reasoning. Uh, The conscious reasoning, I'm just going to go out in front of the hate mail that I'm going to get. Uh Everybody's just going to say, yeah, it's because you can't consciously reason anything. (laughs) So I just, (laughs) whatever I think immediately is what I have. But uh, but I, I have things to say, but I'm really interested in what you have to say. No, I think that you read, you are very emotionally intelligent. I people just snorted Not all a little people bit. People who are emotionally intelligent are intelligent. Is I feel like when you're no, emotional. no, I really do. I think that you are really. I think you have a really high EQ, and um, I think that you read situations really well. I think that you know how people are feeling, and then I, I think that there is a link between emotional intelligence and intuition. Like I am getting a sense. I am reading something off of someone. Like you know when I'm mad at you. You know. <laughs> You know when I'm well, not mad at you anymore. You, you make it pretty obvious. <laughs> I don't think that's any compliment to me at all. <laughs> Whatever. This, I, that was, I was trying to be funny because I'm never mad at you. But um, but I think that you um, you can take a situation and you can boil it down. Here is, here's how I think the quote comes into play about being a master versus a servant because it is, it, it's a master for me. Would oh, you say well, that's... 100%. 100% because the people master. with good intuition can never be talked out of their intuition right. it's like, like no, I think no right. I've got this like, uh, <laughs> and, and he, so here's the thing so like you, I think we'll, we'll get to the second half of the, of, of the quote where it's oh, okay. like, uh, okay. uh, a good servant and a poor master because I think that is kind of the crux of the conversation but one thing that I never really thought about is the the well trained part mm. like I, I, I like again with word association. Yeah. Like before I heard this, I was like, well trained. I, I didn't associate intuition with well trained. I just thought you just had it or you didn't have it. Because, Ooh, like, I ag- I like yeah, like, I agree. A, a, a woman, a mom has intuition about like a mom knows when her kids are doing something bad, uh-huh. right? There's just this intuition. So I didn't think I, I just thought it was innate. Like, oh, you're a mom. You have you have intuition. Mm-hmm. Um, but the well trained thing because I, I was reading this and I was like, uh, on both sides, like I. I, I agree with you. Like I, I have, I do, I live most of my life off of intuition. Mm-hmm. Like there's not a ton of like deep thought about things. I think <laughs> you can make your jokes. That's fine. But it's because, it's because I agree with myself immediately. Like I can be talked out of things. Yeah. And You're I open think, to learning. And I think that's the well-trained part. And I just never thought about it being trained. And it's like, I live my life off of so much intuition, but all that intuition is trained by 31 years of experience. Right. Right. So when it comes to like the things that I have intuition about, I have an intuition about audio editing. I have an intuition <laughs> about how things uh, play on, on the radio, on podcasts. I have an intuition yeah. about when a talk is going well and, and when it isn't. Yeah. And right. Those are all the things that I've done 
hundreds of times. I have the intuition about like when somebody's mad at me and what to say to hopefully fix it because my whole life people have been mad at me and then I fixed it. <laughs> like I've been doing this since I was a kid and I just never thought about how like that came from training. Like all the right. decisions that I'm able to So hold to make on. So by training, you just mean experience? Because is there a way to sharpen it? Is there, there a way? 100%. Like so I, I think it's it's experience but it's also training like like all like I we talked about emotions last segment mm-hmm. and how like I've become more neutral. I'm still not neutral, but I've become more neutral. Yeah. I used to be a hundred percent when everything was going well. Like, it's, like I'm thinking sports. Like when yeah. I was in high school, like testosterone all over the place. Like if I made you look bad, I would make you, I, I let you know that I made you look bad. Right. If you made me look bad, like I was done. Like I was in like a terrible space. Yeah, and the yeah, older yeah. I got, like I had coaches who trained me <laughs> True. like, Hey, literally like, the worst thing you can do to somebody is if they're jawing at you, just smile and walk away and score 30 points. Right. And like, boy, like that's training. That's somebody else seeing it. Gotcha. That's my mom. My mom, who is a woman with a ton of intuition, who feels feelings and, and knows these things. Like I learned that from her. Like, sh- like we would, I, I would come home from stuff and we would go through all the situations that happened in my life. And she would be like, well, you could have done this here. And it, it's trained like moms, coaches, um, uh, mentors. That's all been trained because other people can look at from the outside, look at me and be like, here's what you're doing. Well, here's what you're not. It's pretty obvious. I feel like it takes a certain amount of humility in order to have the training because right. there will be there will be times where it's like, I think I have someone pegged and then that leaves no room for them to surprise you or for them to even surprise surprise themselves and like try out a new tactic, try out a new mode of communication, try out, you know, a new way to, I, I don't know. I just but, pictured you on a scooter. Why? A mode. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> like what in the world <laughs> connect those dots um but anyways i i i have been one of my favorite things in life is being surprised by someone because i so often think that i have the full picture upon introduction you know like because really don't personalities really kind of fall into some pretty similar oh you ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but, um, but I think that, you know, as personalities kind of fall into patterns or different, you know, categories, being surprised by someone is one of my biggest delights, but you have to be open to the possibility of it. Right. You know, like one of my, so I, I remember this conversation wasn't that long ago, but just telling Seth, like this person really surprised me. I thought this one thing and I was wrong. Like that wasn't even true at all. I think this is actually my problem. But here's the thing though. It's like, with a well-trained intuition, you have these intuitions. Most of the time they're right. Otherwise you wouldn't use your intuition. Right. Yeah. But then you get surprised or you're wrong or whatever. Right. Sometimes it's like a happy surprise. Sometimes it's like, Oh, I was wrong. You know? Like, yeah. Right. But right. You right. Right. Recalibrate that intuition because of the experience. Yeah. You had. So it's good. It's good. It's and good. then you're not surprised. It's a really good word yep. again. Right. Um, and, and I, so like now we get into the, to the, um, a good servant, but a servant master, master part. Right? Yeah. Because like, because of my intuition, it is a huge positive for me in my life, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's also been a negative, uh, both in like an actual negative, but also how it's perceived. Uh, I think one one big example is I and I know I know it's I know I'm wrong in this, but it's hard for me to see it is when people like. If I'm, ha- let's say I'm having a conversation, it probably wouldn't happen with you, but let's say I'm having a conversation with you. Like when somebody, when we're ha- having a conversation, we're trying to make a decision okay. and then somebody says, I need to pray about it. Oh. I don't get it. Right. I don't, I don't get it. Agreed. Um, because like, the, and there's a part of me that knows that like prayer and taking things to God yeah, and big decisions is good. Yeah. But it's like, I, I came into this conversation knowing just about any branching tree of outcome that could have come out of this. Yeah. I'm prepared to make any of those decisions Yeah, or to fight against some and for some. Right. 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 Um, and that comes from an intuition that's trained that comes from prayer beforehand. Mm-hmm. So like this, it happened a lot, like in, in ministry stuff, like when I'm in groups and it's like, it comes across as anyone who says I need to pray about it comes across as holier than me. And maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. But I don't think it always is. Yeah. Right. And it's always bothered me because I'm I came in ready to make a decision. 
So when you're like, I need a week to pray about it, I'm like, why? I always attribute. So I'm really decisive like you. I, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, That's why I, <laughs> I would, <laughs> I'm very decisive. And so I always assume that everyone's like me, that everyone's decisive. And really what they're doing is they already know how they feel. They're just taking a week to tell me. And it's like, just tell me. Or they're when scared the tr- to tell me. Right. When the truth is people really are different. And people, some people really do need a Here's week. Here's the <laughs> thing. Here's my negative. Uh, well, maybe I've had more. Here's my really negative comment of the day. I know one, I know for a fact that there are people who said I need to pray about it and never once prayed about it and then just gave me the negative decision four days later. Use it as a tool. I want to choke people. <laughs> <laughs> No, I I am like you. Like I can make a decision. I can I can make it quickly. I don't know how. So is there a difference between intuition and discernment? You know how? Okay, you know how? Sorry, I just switched. I I thought of something. Sorry. Um, you know how there are those people in life that it's like they they get home and they're like, oh man, I wish I would have said this, and I wish I would have said this. Like they might be in the shower, like rehearsing this, all the things that they wish they would have said. I'm starting to feel this is very personal. For you. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I'm the other way because I'm the person that's like, and I shouldn't have said this, right. and I shouldn't have said this. Right. So you're probably getting the same type of trouble. Well, so here's the thing. Any, anytime, I know how I feel. I always know how I feel. I, anytime I say something where somebody's offended or upset or that sort of thing, right? But I, maybe it's because of intuition, but it's like, I, I never, like, I'll, apologize, like I'll, I'll feel bad that the other person feels bad. Yeah. But I, it, it is, it's not that I w- don't want to, like, I can't regret what I said in the moment mm-hmm. because that situation, I was who I am in that situation. Right. And in that moment, I made that a was authentic to me and right. my, yeah. And, and I made it consciously. Like there's very rarely a time right. where I say something like people talk about it all the time. It's like, oh, I said something and I wish I could just bring it back in. Mm-hmm. It's like, I very rarely say something where I didn't like, I, ha- I have, or it's like, I meant it at the time. I just shouldn't have meant it. I should be a better person, but I'm not. I feel like that you and I are so similar in this that we really need to make space for your listeners who are different than us. No, and like a lot. No, (laughs) no, we're not. We're just the same. And other people have really, really, very valid different experiences with all of this. And and that brings the that brings the last part that it's a poor master, and it's a thing that is very hard for me to see. uh, That my intuition is a poor master, but there there are. Well, uh, very obviously times that I've made poor decisions and I, that I thought were right. In the yeah. Time. Or that you should have taken more time. No, 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 no not. just, but, but yes, <laughs> uh, but like where there should have been times where I prayed about something or I came back and talked to my wife about it, or I came back and like, like talked to, uh, you know, no, that's the, good. Uh, the, you know, the, what is it? The wisdom and many mm-hmm. advisors like that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, there, uh, there are obvious times that I've made mistakes and saying it's a poor master. It's like, obviously like relying on my intuition is relying on me and not relying on God. And like, that is 100% my problem. Right. I'm like, uh, my intuition is from God. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, 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 totally get you. I do think it's a gift, but it is, yeah. it is when it's being a servant, yeah. when it's my oh, master. And that's I'm, good. And oh, that's my... real. Boy. B O I. I had I had uh, see again. I came ready for this whole conversation because I've thought about this and prayed about this. Okay. and saw all the branching options. I have to prepare, be prepared for every branch when I have you co-host. So. I ha- <laughs> I have to say this. Our intuition was off because we did not think we could talk a whole segment about intuition. I did. <laughs> I just knew fine. you didn't. Fine, mine was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always right. That's the point of this segment. But like so. Here's the point where I look to my co-host and I say, how do I fix this? And I don't think you know. No, no, we are we are paddling in the very same boat, my friend. And I like the scenery. Yeah. <laughs> I like having good intuition. I feel like, you know what I think that good intuition leads to, which, and this is what I think that you really excel at, is that when you know what you think, you know how you feel about what you're thinking, and then you're able to communicate well. I feel like you're really, really good communicator especially <laughs> you no, just said we will be good communicator. a will a really good communicator <laughs> and especially when things are tricky or dicey or complex i think um and so i think that intuition kind of leads um to people really looking to you for your intuition because you're able to communicate well 
you know, because well, you know what you. you're thinking. Yeah, that's very kind. Yeah, and I think it's 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 just it's interesting hearing it now, like hearing how you say that. Like, I, I just never put these two together. Where like other people come home and be like, "Oh, what could I have said in this situation? What could I have said better?" And it's like, I don't do that. I I think about the conversation the same amount of time as other people do. I just do it before. Right. Oh, that's good. Like, that's I, I, interesting. I'm like, th- th- this could go a thousand different ways, and I'm ready. And like, that's why I don't go. That's to sleep. good. I don't go to sleep the night before. Other people don't go to that's sleep. That's so the night interesting. After, Gosh, like, I love people. <laughs> All these elbows and knees that need each oh, other. It's so good. Oh. Yeah, you do. You do. Look at you. Well, good. I think this is one of the best segments we've ever done together. And oh, that's yeah. my intuition, and no one can change it. So let <laughs> us know. And that's that, my friends. You can let us know. I'll forward all hate mail to Allison, and I'll keep oh, all the positive. You know, stuff. I can't handle that. I'm way too sensitive Stay for neutral. that. Stay <laughs> neutral. little Care Bear. <laughs> well, that's our show for today, Allison. Thanks for being here. This was fun. It was so I, fun. I it's always it. so fun. Um, I will be back next week. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, all things for the Catholic, F O R T E Catholic.com for the podcast, YouTube, social media, all of that stuff. You'll love you guys. I'll see you next week. Say it! Thank you guys so much for watching today's show. I hope that you enjoyed it. We had so much fun recording this in here, and the margaritas helped quite a bit. Uh, But I'm so thankful for all of you guys. Uh, Without listeners of the show, supporters of the show, I wouldn't be able to work for Forte Catholic full time. Uh, With that in mind, I would be so thankful to you guys. If if you have the means to support Forte Catholic as a nonprofit, uh, I, I... it would just mean the world to me. ForteCatholic.com slash donate is a way to give a um, what is tax deductible gift. We're really trying to live out the new evangelization here. Not only are we doing the stuff that you guys see here, like in front of the camera, the YouTube podcast and all that sort of stuff. But um, I'm, I'm able to work with 15 other creators, 15 other podcasts that I'm working with now, including a bishop, which is super exciting. Uh, but to help help people evangelize in this digital era. Uh, I'm loving this work that I'm doing and I couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, If you are donating, thank you so much. If you haven't yet, you can use the link. Uh, Monthly donations are tremendous. Or if you're looking to give a a one-time gift because you know, the year is ending and your your tax year is ending. I would so, so appreciate it. God bless. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you next week.